Greetings. This is Justin Allen with the Elite Nurse Practitioner. Welcome to the Elite Nurse Practitioner Show, a podcast dedicated to nurse practitioner entrepreneurism and achieving financial freedom, where I talk directly with nurse practitioners who need help. Listen up. Our market is saturated. Jobs can be scarce. We are underpaid. We are undervalued. We are taken advantage of by the sharks within the healthcare system. And frankly, screw that. Sick of it. And it's time for a change. And listen, I'm here to help make that happen. We are powerful. We can forge a path where we are in control of our career and ultimately our financial and personal well-being. You do not need to submit to healthcare administrators and your doctor overlords. You do not have to take the measly salary. You do not have to work 50 to 60 hours a week. There is a different way, and I'm here to show you that path. This podcast is raw and unfiltered. I have not talked to nurse practitioners in this podcast prior to the call outside of an email exchange to schedule the episode. What you're about to listen to is a consultation session between a nurse practitioner and myself. It is real, it is unscripted, it is unplanned, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Anything and everything can happen during our conversation. The nurse practitioners in these episodes are struggling with an issue in their professional or financial life, and they have reached out to me for help. My goal is to help the nurse practitioner with actionable advice that will enhance and improve their professional, business, and financial life. My other goal is to hopefully help my nurse practitioner sisters and brothers build a more productive, powerful, and free life. So I hope the content and information within these podcast episodes does just that. All right, on to the episode. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking to Noreen, who is an adult nurse practitioner. We spoke to Noreen on episode 34, where we talked about strategies and ways to grow her practice. Noreen's business has grown significantly since the episode, and she is looking into hiring more staff and a nurse practitioner to help her grow further. She's also wanting to add some more services and is needing assistance with navigating her newfound success. Hey, Noreen, how are you? Hi, Justin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for helping back on here. So uh, it's great to hear you know that your practice is succeeding. So I guess walk us through kind of what's been going on since uh, you know since we recorded our episode thirty four back in I think it was like back like last May May last or May. something. Yeah, so it's been almost a year. So because we're recording yes. this in April of twenty twenty three. Yeah, so just walk me through uh, kind of what's happened. Okay, so last May I was just offering IV therapy, and I learned pretty fast that you cannot just offer one service. So I right. reached out to you and you had me on the podcast and my skinny drip was very popular at the time. And you said, obviously your patients are interested in weight loss. So I took the weight loss class that you offer. I started offering some maglutide to, you know, the patients who who needed it. And I think after a few months, it really took off. Once the maglutide, once the celebrity started doing it, that's when it really took off. And I added a second location since I last talked to you. I had told you last May that my goal is to franchise my business. So in October, I had a client come in. He got an IV and he said, is this a franchise? And I said, no, that's my goal for 2023. And he said, well, I have a lot of experience with franchises. He owned a flower franchise in the 90s and he owned it with the Staples founder. So this guy's like gold when it comes to business, right? So he's like, I want to help you grow. He's not my partner. He has no money invested. He helped me pick my second location. And our goal this in the next few months is to pick a third location, but I want to make sure the second location is stable. And then when the franchise piece comes in, he's going to help me. And that's when he's going to make his money. But again, he's never going to be my partner on paper. It's all, I'm going to go through a business lawyer and figure out like what to do with them so I can pay them, but not directly from me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can give me feedback on that too. So you've integrated some more services which is wise, you know, you don't want to just stick with just one thing unless, unless that one thing is very, very profitable. Right. IV infusion, I mean, IV infusion is profitable, but it's just not, it's not that profitable, right? Right. Um, yeah. And it is a lot of manpower, like you said. It's yeah. exhausting. It's exhausting. It's labor. It's a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, right. Versus just you prescribing, yeah, prescribing weight loss yes. and testosterone or something. It's so much easier, right? And you make just I as know. much money, if not more. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Walk me through what, what are you offering exactly right now? So I can just kind of wrap my head around what, sure. what it is that you're doing. I, um, IV therapy and medical weight loss. So I offer semaglutide and like Bella capsules. And I've kind of stared away from fentamine because of the cardiac risk. I just, I don't want to get into doing EKGs and all that stuff. Well, Maybe. Oh, you don't really, if there's no risk factors, it's not necessary. Okay. I can tell so like you, I've done, 
Yeah, like I think I've done two EKGs on prescribed fentanyl for in the last three years. Really All not right. necessary. Yeah, unless there's risk factors associated with it. You know, like really, really obese, metabolic syndrome, hypertension. You know, they have a resting heart rate over 100. Like things like that, I would probably do an EKG. But like if they're a healthy person who just needs to lose 30 pounds with no medical history and they're 35 years old, the hell is that EKG going to show you? Okay. Like, it's really going to show you anything, you know? So yeah, don't be too what scared. What do people, venture. all right, all right. You, now you're talking me into it. What do people usually charge like average? Can you can you say that like average fentramine prescription? Yeah, yeah. so like I have a global basically monthly subscription fee at my men's health clinic, you know? So like we have a subscription fee for men's health and weight loss and peptide therapy and this kind of a thing. And the global fee is 140 bucks a month basically, right? Give or take okay. 10, 15 dollars. And, uh, and yeah, so included in that cost would be the fentramine and the visits, for example. And so your cost okay. for the fentramine is going to be anywhere between 50 cents to a dollar a capsule through a compounding pharmacy. And so, okay. you know, you, you do the math. It's great margins, right? Okay, perfect. Yeah. It is. All yeah. right. I'm, I'm going to really think about that now. Yeah, absolutely. It should be an option. People, people like fentramine, you know what I mean? I mean, it makes, okay. them, it makes them feel good, but it really does help with, with weight loss. I mean, it's- I know. I've heard good things like about yeah, it. It's great. Two or three month um, cycles of it. So pretty much all you ever got to do. Okay, cool. Yep. The other thing I offer is testosterone replacement. Okay. Um, I, I don't love it. It's not my, it's not, I just don't have an affinity for it. So I'm thinking sure. if I hire another NP, maybe that's something they could take over. I haven't oh. really promoted it because I, I just, I don't love it. It doesn't bring me- happiness you know what i mean so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to do only things that make me happy but if i had another np maybe the other np could do the could handle that piece of it well there you go i mean if it's a growing service line don't throw it away you know just figure out a way you can make it work for you right right right, right yeah right. it's not super busy because i don't like i said i don't really push it but we do have a handful of patients on it and i think we could promote it more if I had someone that wasn't me doing it, you know? Right. I do want to get into peptides. I just haven't had time to, I took the class, but I haven't had time to look into that. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, peptides are great. Uh, did you take our men's health course? Yep. I took both of them. I yeah. Took both. We talk about a lot of peptides in that. You can just offer those. You don't really have to complicate it. Okay. Yeah. I, I only, I only offer three or four of them. Like, that's pretty much it. Like the ones in the men's health course, and the advanced course, like those are really bad. That's all I offer. I don't really offer a lot of the the other peptides that we talked about in the peptide course. You certainly can. I don't. Okay. Now I want to make it simple. All right. Yeah, I'll, look, I'll listen to the men's health second course. Right, right, right. Okay. So anyways, uh, tell me a little bit about um, this this relationship that you got. So let's try to stay on track here. So I want to talk about this relationship, partnership kind of thing that you got going on. And then also let's talk about how you're going to hire a nurse practitioner. Okay. So the relationship with this businessman, he, um, he said he would work with me to build three locations for a year. In October, it'll be a year. And then he wants to get paid. So I said, well, let's see a business attorney to see how you will get paid. And I think he will get, I envision him getting paid through the franchise. It's like maybe getting some of the franchise fee or something because he is excellent with locations and he has so much business knowledge that I don't have. I definitely want to pay him because we could definitely go places together with my knowledge and his knowledge and so yeah, that's where that that relationship is at. So is he going to invest any money in the business? Like no, no, he's not going to invest any money. So he's basically just a mentor. Yes. And for his mentorship, he's wanting a little piece of the pie. Is that is that? I mean, yes. is that, am I understanding this right? Yes, okay. you nailed yeah. it. You nailed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, is the guy rich? When he's uh, sold some he's, businesses and stuff. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I think he is, but I don't really need his money right now. And I don't right. want to take it if I don't no, need no, no. it. I don't want any hands in my business except no, mine. No, 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 I agree. So I think that, you know, it needs to be, I just hate you paying someone for just some mentorship and some advice. Like when you probably don't really, I don't yeah. know, you probably don't really need it. I mean, I mean, you've already gotten to a level of success. that's pretty impressive. I mean, you know, do you, do you really need someone else's advice? For a, piece I know. Of, for a piece of pie. I don't I know. He, well, here's the thing. Here's what he has that I don't. And if you can tell me somewhere else to get this, I will I will listen to you. Like, so he knows locations. He knows he, he can just pick locations so well. You know, he has the time to look into it and he does have just like great business knowledge. He'll say things and I'm like, wow, that's genius. And I didn't, you know, like I don't know yeah. where else to get what he has. Okay, if you gonna help you find another location, I mean, I go to Google Maps, type this weight loss <laughs> clinic, and start scrolling around. Like, you know, just start scrolling around, and open one up where there isn't one. I mean, it's that simple, you know. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's really not that hard. You always want to go where there's no competition, right? Like never open up something in a saturated market. It's like, it's like when I drive around town and like someone opens up a coffee shop right across the street from Starbucks. Like what's going on through your head? Why, why do you think this is a good idea? I it's, know. You know? Like, right. Okay. So it's really not that difficult of a thing to do. Just like deliver the need, right? There's going to be a need in places where there's, you know, no competition, basically. Like, and I mean, I've talked about this recently a lot about the small towns, like small towns are gold. You know, if you open up another location in a smaller town, that's, you know, within an hour or two drive of where you're at, I mean, it's probably going to work, you know? Okay. Yeah. But in terms of just like mentorship and having some good ideas and stuff, I just, you know, these are going to have to be hundred thousand dollar ideas to really justify paying this guy any money i know i really you know the more, now that i'm talking to you the, about this like i have no other business people to really discuss this with and i think you're right i really don't think i need them i don't think you need them i just i hate that you'd have to give away money what he's going to provide is valuable but at the same time it's not right. i just i just don't think it's, it'd be worthwhile okay you know i think you'd be All better right. off spending money a one-time fee kind of stuff joining some higher level entrepreneurial mastermind or yeah. maybe finding a higher level business mentor who's, you know, who's been there in franchise businesses and stuff like that. And you pay them a consulting fee. I'd rather have you okay. do that than give someone a piece of your pie, basically. Like, I just don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. So maybe I could give them a consulting Consulting fee? That would be or maybe wise. find someone else. Pay them flat okay. rates, right? Be like, listen, you know, I don't feel comfortable giving you, you know, equity or you know, some profit or whatever, especially on an ongoing basis. But like, can I pay you to be like, you know, as a consultant, a mentor, or whatever? And if they can't, then just look elsewhere. You know? Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not really doing mentorship anymore. I just, I just don't have time. Yeah, it's um, exhausting. I bet. Well, I mean, it's it's fun. I enjoy it. It's just, I just don't have time. Like, I just, yeah, I don't have the time for it. You know. But there's so many like entrepreneurial, like higher level ones that, you know, do I know. Take clients, but it's expensive, you know, and you're talking right. about oh, yeah. dollars a month plus, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're only gonna do it for a few months, right? Right. I'm actually in an e-myth, you know, the book e-myth? Yeah. Uh, they have like a group. It's, I call it like a mastermind. You meet like two to three times a week. I just joined and I just started like two weeks ago. So I can't really say how good it is or not, but it's like a four month thing and it's 750 a month just for four months and then their higher level program is like one to 2k a month so I was like let me just try out this lower level with a group of people and see how that goes and then if it's any good I'll go to the higher level one but yeah, so I am know. doing something yeah okay 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 well that's good you know and then you can always ask you can always ask and you can always shoot me an email if you have a question or something you know well hell we could hop on a podcast okay. call again you know Okay. Yeah. 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 It's like this is super interesting stuff. You know, it was okay. very rarely do we have follow up. So I like, I really like these follow up episodes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, anyways, I say avoid it. Say yourself okay. now. Awesome. Um, yeah. Hire another nurse practitioner. So, yes. What do you, I do? Well, give me a little bit of your line of thought. What are you looking for? Are you okay. Looking here's for? what I'm thinking. Okay. So I streamlined all my medical weight loss consults to like telephone or virtual, right? On, two days a week, Mondays and Thursdays. So I'm trying to, I, it was chaotic. It was during the week. It was, you know, it was a few times a day. I was like, no, I got to scale these down to two days. So I have them now two days. They can be virtual. I'm the one currently doing them. I can work from home, do them. I have the nurses in the office, like handling the IVs. They call me for any issues or any, you know, weight loss, medication adjustments that aren't, you know, in the standing orders. And I'm, I'm very hands-on from afar. You know what I mean? So I was thinking I could hand over the Mondays and Thursdays telehealth weight loss consults to another NP. But then here's the other one. I'm taking a mesotherapy class, which is the fat burning shots that you do like in your bra fat and your abdomen. So I'm taking a class on that. My patients have asked for it. My insurance agent said only NPs, myself, could do it. RNs cannot perform that service. So I almost said, why offer it? I don't want to do it. But if I, then I'm thinking if I hire an NP, I could have the NP do the mesotherapy. I could train that NP and then also do the weight loss consults. Sure. Okay. Do you want this person to have experience or do you want to train them on how like you want things done? I can train them on how I want things done. I don't think I'm going to find someone with really a whole lot of either of these experiences, you know? And then do I pay them hourly? Like, how does this work? 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I agree. I think it's best to hire someone that you can train. I just hired a nurse practitioner at my men's health clinic, uh, my second men's health clinic. So that's, our, that's my second MP there at that location. Uh, just growing. I just, I, we just need someone else, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have two NPs at my second location now and she has experience with men's health, but her experience is very similar to how I like to practice. And so I was okay with hiring someone with experience. I just hired another nurse practitioner. I hired two nurse practitioners this month. I just hired another nurse practitioner for my original men's health location. So that was going to be three NPs there now. So I have five working for me. Wow. Yeah. And uh, she didn't have experience, which is fine. I can teach her how to do it. You know what I mean? Okay. And plus I have my men's health course. I can just put her in front of a in front of, I in front know, of a right? Like, watch this. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Minus the business uh, startup section. <laughs> don't, I know, right? Don't watch right. that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, but, uh, do but I yeah, pay so, them like as a 1099? Uh, correct, to, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. 1099. Yeah, so be thinking about how you're going to train them, okay? It's important. Yeah. Like, how yeah. are you going, like, what do you want them to know? Uh, I mean, you have them watch our courses. Mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah. purchase them, have them watch it. If, if you yeah. want them to have, if you want them to have a certification, a certificate, then. No, uh, I don't need you know, that. No, okay. Some malpractice companies require it. So just Oh, okay. Yeah. Some of them will require, some don't. It's just it's really up to them. Okay. If they do, just let me know. I'll give you a discount. We just, you know, you can have a couple buy a couple courses for them or whatever. Okay. But anyways, though, think about how you're gonna train them. I wouldn't hire a new grad, but definitely have someone that has some experience. One to three, okay. you know. All right. Who's knowledgeable about looking at labs, right. doing some things like that, right? Like just some basic experience, right? Some basic yeah. Basic experience. Yeah. So make sure that they have that and then you can just train them, right? And then you're going to hire them as a 1099, really have them kind of make their own schedule. You know, when do you want to see patients? Great. Then we'll schedule patients during that time. You know what I mean? Be a little flexible with it because it's probably going to be more of a part-time thing, right? More than okay. likely. Yeah, it, uh, definitely. Yeah. So they'll probably have another job, right? You have to allow them to be flexible with it. Okay. Yeah. And if you do that, then there's really going to be no issues with scheduling or availability or anything like that. Okay. I allow my NPs to work whenever they want. I don't care. Like okay. some of them work in the evenings after their full-time job. Some of them want to work on a Saturday. Some of them, you know, want to do noon on a Thursday or whatever. I don't care. As long as patients are seen. You know what I mean? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I have another question now. With the weight loss of valves, what I do is a $75 consult fee, right, for the patient. But that $75 goes towards any semaglutide or, you know, medication purchase, right? So should I make it that they pay $75, but they don't get it put towards any of the medications and then pay the NP with that $75? No, I think you just pay pay them flat rate for the initials and follow-ups. For anything. Okay. It should be about the same rate. Okay. Yeah. Unless it's a procedural kind of thing that takes some, you know, that takes more time or something, then you might want to maybe pay them a little bit more. Um, okay. You could do percentages of collection or percentages of net income and that kind of a thing. I personally don't like that model. It's a pain in the ass calculating it. Every yeah. Month. Right. I, just, right. Yeah, I, I don't like that model. I prefer just a flat rate that's very lucrative. You know, you can get an NP to 100 to $200 an hour. They're going to be happy. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. Yep. You know, $100 for initial appointments, $50 for follow-ups. That's what I do. And my NPs will make anywhere between $100 and $200 an hour on average. Okay. Okay. That's good money for them. It's great yeah, money. Yeah, that is. Right? It's great money. It is. You know, come really in good. three or four hours and you make, you know, seven, 800 bucks. Like, you're not going to make any better money working for anyone else. You know, it's just not going to happen. It's really good. Yeah. So you could do something like that. So you just got to really just run your numbers and whatever you're comfortable with. The okay. flat rate like that, though, it is great for your margins because you're only paying them a one-time fee for that visit. And then, you know, that monthly subscription that they're paying, you know, you're keeping almost all the profit okay. as a business owner. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. That's how I would do it. So just run the numbers and whatever makes sense for you. It's $30 or it's $40 or it's $100 or it's $200, like whatever makes sense. Like if it's going to be a follow up, it's going to take them five minutes or something, you know, like I, right. I would pay them 50 bucks for that. Okay. You know, All right. Just, yeah. Just think it through. Okay. Got it. All right. I hope everyone's enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick break to thank everyone listening and also give a big thank you to all of my social media followers and email subscribers. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our email list at www.leadnp.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Email subscribers will receive updates on new weekly podcast episodes, 
multiple weekly articles we publish, new courses, and everything else related to helping you succeed. Remember, all elite nurse practitioner courses are designed to help you build a niche practice, increase your financial strength, and to break free from the rat race. If I can break free and the other countless nurse practitioners can break free, then so can you. Additionally, please share this podcast with your other nurse practitioners, sisters, and brothers out there. The more NPs that venture out on their own, the stronger our profession will become. Now, let's get back to the episode. And then S Corp. I just saw your post about oh, yeah, changing. Article. Yeah, the article about doing an S Corp. Is that easy to do? My accountant, I told him, I sent him your article. I was like, hey, sh- I want to do this. And he's like, well, I'll charge you $500 to do it. And I thought, oh, I better check with you. Is it easy enough or should I pay him to do it? It's literally a form you fill out and you mail it to the IRS. It takes you five okay. minutes to fill it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it prints it out yeah. and then. Yeah. All right. It literally, it literally takes five minutes. The form is in that article. It's IRS form 2553. What is it, IRS 2553? 2553 is the form, yeah. So if you just go back, go back to the Elite NP website, go to all articles, type in S-Corp, and the article okay. will pop up, and then it'll it'll walk you through kind of how you you know how to do it. The form's there. So it's, you, you fill it out, you mail it to IRS, they mail you a letter, you know, eight weeks later. Congratulations, you're you know now considered an S Corp from from a, from a tax perspective. Okay, you're still an LLC, see. but you're just being taxed as an S Corp, basically. Okay, yeah. So do you know what that means? No, I was that was my next question. I'm like, so I don't understand how how's that going to benefit me? So now that you're actually making decent money, right? Just a little background here. You do not need to be taxed as an S Corp when you're first getting started. It's not necessary because you're not really making any money. It's not really mm-hmm. necessary. You can yeah. if you want, but it's not necessary. Once you actually start making a profit of like 50000 bucks a year, that's what most accountants will tell you when it's kind right. of worthwhile to do it. When you're making mm-hmm. about $50,000 net income a year, which I'm assuming you're at now, right? You're probably yeah, I did sixty five k last month in sales. Nice. How much of that was profit? 30, 40%? Um, yeah, I'd say around that, 30 to 40%. Okay, yeah. So you're way, way above $50,000 a year in net income. Uh, right. Yeah, you're approaching probably close to half a million. So congratulations. Thank um, you. That's awesome. We're making NP millionaires, right? Awesome. I love it. I, I love, love it, it too. Yeah. So when you're being taxed as an S corp, so you still have an LLC, but the IRS is going to tax you as an S corp. You do not want an S corp because there's a bunch of corporate bullshit you got to deal with. All these forms you got to fill out, submissions to the state. It's a pain in the ass. So okay. staying in LLC is simple, but the IRS is going to tax you as an S corp, but you don't have to fool okay. with all the corporate documents you have to send to the state and stuff. Okay. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So you're an LLC being taxed as an S corp. And so what that means is, is that you have to pay yourself a salary through your business. You have to be paid, you know, an hourly rate or salary or whatever that is going to be industry standard and industry average. All right. So the average nurse practitioner makes what, 50, 55 bucks a, an hour, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll pay yourself 55 bucks an hour. It's the average. Right. And so you'll pay yourself that salary. That salary will be um, subject to employment taxes. So Medicare, Social Security tax. All right. Okay. So it costs you 15%, basically, as, as the business owner. So as the business owner, you're going to pay 15% to Social Security and Medicare. When you're employed, the employer pays 7.5%, and then you pay the other 7.5%. Okay? okay. But you, as the business yeah. owner, you're on the hook for the entire 15%. That's the salary you're paying yourself. Everything else, is given to you as a distribution or a bonus, and it is only subject to federal income tax. It is not subject to the employment tax. So it saves you 15%. So it's a no okay. brainer. Okay. Right? That's gotcha. 15%. It adds up yeah. really quick. You know? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's going to save you $50,000 a year, probably. Maybe more. Awesome. You know? Okay. I mean, that's a new car every year, right? Yeah, so. I'm going to get on that when we hang out. Yeah, do it. Super <laughs> easy. There's nothing to yeah. it. Hey, don't pay your accountant $500 to do it for you. There's, there's nothing okay. to it. Good. All right. What pharmacy do you get fentamine from that's fast, like the shipping? Uh, I believe we're getting ours through Empower right now, but they are not fast. I know. That's why I asked. Anymore, my office manager seems to be juggling a lot of these combating pharmacies. Like, All right. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one placing orders. And so for the most part anymore, I don't even, I don't even fool with it. Um, Right. But we were getting it through Empower. I think we were doing it through Southlake at one time. But most of the company pharmacies are going to have fentanyl. It's going to be a patient specific drug. Yeah. 
Exactly. Okay. I'm going to offer that now. Now, since you've talked me off the ledge about it. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. <laughs> it's cheap. It's effective. Patients like it. Like, it's a no-brainer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Any other questions? No, you've really, I'm so happy I spoke with you because you really kind of brought everything to light, everything that I've been thinking that I have no one else to really talk to about it. So, sure. yeah, that's ready. super helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, listen, it's, you're getting ready to have a lot of good problems. I agree. I yeah. agree. Like, I want to talk to you about that just real quick. So when you start making three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. you know, actually, like that's what you're making, like that's what you bring home. You start yeah. having uh, wealthy people problems. Okay, so like, taxes mostly. <laughs> like, okay. When you see thirty five, forty percent of your money gone, it really will piss you off. I'm all about wealth equality and all that kind of stuff, but there's a bigger difference when you're making five hundred thousand to a million dollars a year and you're giving away forty percent compared to eighty thousand dollars a year. Like there's right. a there, you know? Yeah. And so you have to really, really be thinking about taxes. And you also need to be thinking about some asset protection stuff as well. Yeah. What do you mean? Like a trust? Trusts, a titling assets and LLCs and things like that. Correct. Yeah. You might want to check out the asset protection course that I have. Um, oh, yeah. It really walks you through it. And then you can maybe talk to a lawyer and kind of get some of the stuff that I talk about set up. Um, okay. If your business continues this way, I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to have probably a million dollar net worth within a year mm -hmm. or two. Okay. Good. Your business itself is already worth that. All right. Okay. Typically, you evaluate a company based off of three to four times earnings. Okay. And so your business is a million dollar business at this point from okay. a valuation standpoint. Okay. So technically, your net worth is over a million dollars. And so when you have a net worth like that, it's really, really important to start thinking about how can I keep more of what I make? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then how do I protect what I make? How do I preserve my wealth? Because a lot of people become wealthy, but a lot of idiots lose it all because they're idiots. Right. Exactly. Right. So how do you preserve it for the long term? How old are you? 53. 53. Okay. So, you know. I have three kids going to college. Okay. So. Yeah. So you have a lot of expenses. I'm assuming. Uh, tons. Yeah. Tons. Yep. Yeah. So I'm assuming you probably would like to be somewhat semi-retired in the next five to 10 years, I would imagine. Yeah. I'd say the next five to 10 months. I want to work as least, <laughs> the least amount of poss as possible. Okay. Gotcha. So the, like the next year, you really want to be, you know. A very, very partially passive in nature kind of job. Yes. Yeah. So I think you'll get there. Okay. So you really need to be thinking about how you're going to preserve your wealth. And that's by, you know, avoiding lawsuits, obviously, right? You never want to mm -hmm. lose money from a lawsuit. You're investing your money appropriately, you know, li still living below your means and having your money work for you, basically. That's really what it comes down to. But okay. being somewhat risk adverse as well. You know, I know some people who put a lot of money into cryptocurrency and they lost right. so much of their money. I'm just yes. like, you idiot. I told you not to do that. And you did it. Again. Right. <laughs> you know, and you lost 80% of the valuation. Like, I don't, I don't feel sorry for you. Like it's, oh, yeah. I just put like $100 on a few of the crypto things, but that's about it. I just right. want to just watch it and see how it, it works to kind of to learn the system. But yeah, yeah I'm not, I mean, I don't know anything crazy. Yeah, it's it's so volatile. Don't, don't, don't invest a lot of money into it. It's not an investment. It's a gamble, basically. It's a speculation. Like you're speculating it, right? You're thinking it might yeah. go up, but who knows? So anyways, wealth preservation, asset protection, investing in taxes. That's really what you need to start wrapping your Oh, I'm going to get your course. I'm so into this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely. Yeah. yeah, the taxes thing. Okay, so listen, an accountant, most of them are just data entry specialists. Okay, they know mm -hmm. how to file a tax return. All right? right. They're not tax strategists. They're not a tax attorney. Okay. Yeah. There's a big difference. People I just who, found a tax strategist after you had mentioned that in one of your posts. Perfect. So, you know, some of them are worth the money. Some of them were not. Everyone I've ever used, they they weren't telling me anything I didn't already know. So I always yeah. thought it could be kind of a waste of money. Mm -hmm. If you haven't took the tax course, take the tax course. It's going to save you a lot of money. You really don't need a tax strategy. You can just follow the steps in that course. Okay. It's basically- Hold on. So get the asset protection course and the tax course. And the tax course. Correct. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay. You're, you're getting ready to have wealthy people problems. And that's what those two courses are for. Like, Oh, perfect. Successful business owners like that. You really need to take those two courses. Like, yeah, it's super okay. important because you want to keep as much as you possibly can, right? Yeah, and absolutely. So, yeah. If filing as an S Corp is one step in the in, in the right direction, but you also need to be thinking now about company vehicles, how to write off business trips slash vacations, you know, yeah. how can you write off a party that you host at your house? Like you can do stuff like this if you know how to do it. Okay. Okay. All it comes down to, you're not you're not evading taxes. You are legally reducing them based off of the law. All right. Okay. 
yeah. congressmen, congresswomen, senators, presidents, these people do it, you can do it. Okay. They design these laws to help themselves, right? So it's, okay. it's, it's the law. So you're not cheating. Okay. But you're just using what's there. And so wrap your mind around that and then wrap your mind around some asset protection. So where you're at now, you're still kind of early into it. This is the perfect time to set up some asset protection structures, trust, okay. limited liability partnerships, titling assets and trusts and you know various different entities. Doing things like that early now is what you want because when you're sued, it's too late to do any of that. You can't do any of that. Okay. 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 Once a lawsuit yeah. It's your mailbox. Like once you are holding that lawsuit, tough shit. You can't do any of that stuff. You can't open trusts. You you can't do any of it. Oh, uh, okay? okay. It's too yep. late. You have to do it before. Okay, so that's awesome. Why it's, yeah, it's so important to get this shit done now, okay? Okay. So, yeah, so, so be thinking about that. Then also be thinking about how you're going to invest that money and do it wisely. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in yeah. a women's real estate investment group. Oh, perfect. That's one way. Yeah, yeah. that's one Real. Way. Real estate's a solid option. You're not going to go mm -hmm. wrong with real estate as long as you don't buy stuff, you know, that's super expensive for what it is. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you do that, have a diversified portfolio, investing in real estate, investing some money in the stock market, putting some money in some bonds, CDs, things like that, you should be okay. okay as long cool. as it's titled in something that's going to protect it. Because if it's in your name, it's up for grabs or a lawsuit. Okay. So I have to put it in a trust. Put it in a trust name, limited liability partnerships, those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. You I'm basically, you don't want to own anything. Okay. That's what it, that's gotcha. what it comes down to. You don't want to own anything. All right. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Very good to know. Awesome. What, any questions? One last question. Okay. Um, in my second location, I have, you know, like an M sculpt machine. Someone tried to sell me like an M sculpt Neo, which was $200,000. And this is where the business guy, I ran it by him. This is where he's kind of convenient. You know, sure. I said, Hey, you know, this $200,000 machine, blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, I'm going to find one for less. So he found one on Alibaba for 5k. Right. Right. So it's like an M-Sculpt Neo, but I can't advertise it as M-Sculpt Neo because it's not from that company, but it does the exact same thing. So I'm trying to think of like, I've done a few promotions, but I haven't had high sales in it. And um, I just joined a Facebook group on how to promote like your fat burning body contouring machine. But I didn't know if you had any helpful hints on that or. Yeah. The only problem is like notes. a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people know that like that's the name. Right. And yeah. so it's like advertising Botox, but you're not using Botox. You're using a, you know, another brand, right? Like you, right. you right. technically can't advertise Botox. That's what people know, right? They know the name Botox, right? Yeah. They don't really know the other names. You know, a lot of people don't. Okay. Same thing with the M sculpt or the cool sculpting or the P shots or the O shots. Like you can't advertise those things unless you took their training or you bought their product, right? Right. So you know, how do you navigate that? I mean- <laughs> People do it. My colleagues have like M Slim machines and I mean, people do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could just say we have this fancy fat burning thing that's similar to, you know, whatever. Right. I, did say, to, I do say that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're able to offer it to you at a discounted price because, you know, I think you just have to sell it. Okay. Yeah. I do offer a discount because, you know, like grand opening discount, I lost my $500 off. I think it's just my, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see what this boot camp on Facebook can help me with ideas on like how to promote it and stuff. Well, how it's done with Botox is, is that you buy some Botox, but you use the other products because it's cheaper. Okay. Like you have some Botox and you use some Botox, but you use the other toxins because it's cheaper. Okay. That's how you get around it. And so okay. what I'm wondering is, is that if you have three locations, but only one truly has an end sculpt, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can, add, you can now advertise it, but the two other locations don't. Is that investment worthwhile? You know, I don't, I don't know. Probably not, but I just don't know how many people are actually searching for that thing. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you get around right. it. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, no, I, you gave me more than I bargained for. I can't wait to take these classes that you just mentioned and you gave me so much good advice. Yeah. I knew well, something was missing in my weight loss. French means what's missing. So yeah. this is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Offer it. It's a, it's a no brainer, you know? Okay. Um, well, listen, I appreciate you hopping on here. Uh, I'm so happy to hear. Thank you success. for everything. You're very welcome. And you know, if you want to do another follow-up in a few months or another year or whatever, you just let me know. Oh, I will. We will do another follow-up. Absolutely. Sure. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. All right. Have Thank a good you. day. Bye-bye.
All right, I hope everyone enjoyed the episode with Noreen. She is killing it. Yeah, I mean, this was a great follow-up episode. You know, she started to practice a year or two ago, and I mean, she's, I mean, she's making almost half a million dollars a year in net income. I mean, she's going to be a millionaire nurse practitioner in no time. I mean, if you already factor in the valuation of her business, I mean, she's already there in terms of a net worth, right? So there's a difference between net worth and actually how much cash flow you have, okay? But her net worth, yeah, I mean, she's already a millionaire. And so she's on her path of true wealth, all right? So you guys need to understand, there's a difference between making good money and having true wealth. True wealth is having that FU money, that money to where you can just give the finger to anyone you want because you don't have to take their shit, basically, all right? And so that's true wealth. She's gonna have that very, very soon. So she needs to be thinking to herself, asset protection, she needs to be thinking to herself, how to lower my taxes legally. She needs to be thinking, how am I going to invest this money? How am I going to preserve my wealth and have my money work for me, okay? It takes a little time to get to that point, guys. No one's gonna start a business and get there in six months. It's not going to happen, right? It takes work, it takes time, it takes hustle. But if you do things right, you give it a couple of years, you will get there and then you will have those wealthy people problems. All right, hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Talk to you guys later. Thanks, bye. Thank you for listening to the show. Quick legal disclaimer, the content of this podcast is meant for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be used as legal, financial, medical, regulatory, or practice specific advice. For information pertaining to your specific legal, financial, medical, or practice specific needs, please be sure to consult with your lawyer, CPA, medical director, and or your state's practice laws and the most up-to-date clinical guidelines. As always, do your due diligence when it comes to any information found online and in podcasts. The content in this podcast is copyrighted by Galaxy Medical Southwest 2023 and cannot be duplicated, rebroadcasted, or reproduced with out our written permission.